All right, guys, so, um, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing now. I was going to do a video on uh, prepping for travel, but my flight literally just got canceled 10 minutes ago, so I'm um, just kind of, like, in, in, like, trying to figure things out now. I'm supposed to go train with Hunter Labrada in Dallas, um, but there's a hurricane coming tomorrow. It's certainly um, complicating things as a storm like Ada comes ashore in our area. I guess... So, um, you know, things change, so... But we're still gonna do a video. I mean, who doesn't like to watch me cook food? Cooking with Diesel. <laughs> um, I'm gonna cook up some food, and then we're just gonna kind of ramble and chat while I do it. So it's kind of like a podcast, kind of like a, a cooking thing, so... So I'm not the most accurate when it comes to my beef. You can always say, I can always say, well, it hasn't hurt me yet. And a lot of people think I can get top three, but then I have placed better than the guy that beat me last, Alex. He's in great shape, if you haven't seen him. He's in real. So we're gonna be cooking up some beef. I got organic 93.7. And um, yeah, that's what I normally get. I've been fortunate enough to get organic um, meats this year. You know, before that I just did the cheap stuff from Walmart or Costco or whatever. But now, you know, I'm doing a little bit better. I can afford that, so doing that now. But uh, yeah, besides that, you know, right now, um, cool little plan me and Daniel were talking about was setting up um, some trips to train with old school pros like Mike Christian, uh, Lee Haney, Lee Labrada, uh, Rich Gaspari, Muhammad Makawi, Robert, uh, Robbie Robinson, guys like that. Um, I've been wanting to do that since I got started in bodybuilding. I just didn't have the funds to travel. I didn't have like the popularity, I don't think, to actually get my foot in the door to train with these guys. So now I think I'm in a good spot to kind of hit them up and actually be able to do something like that without them just laughing in my face or ignoring me or whatever. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm excited for that. I've, I've met Lee a couple of times. He's gave me a cell phone number. So he may be one of the first I'll reach out to. He lives out in Houston. I've actually trained with him once before. Uh, at least, I got I literally got to train with him the first time I met him, which was literally the be, the coolest thing ever. I, I was at the Arnold, and um, obviously this is the first time I met Hunter, but I knew Hunter from uh, you know he trained with Joe, and we were both training back, and I got in the back session with Lee, and it was really interesting to see how how Lee trained because he trained very similar to how I train, you know, very his form was you know immaculate. Um, and I really, I really like the way he, he went about doing things. And uh, I mean, you can see his physique now. He still looks very, very young. He still has like, great, he's, he's in, he's like, he looks healthy for his age. So really, really cool there. But um, yeah, yeah, I think I may, may hit him up soon. He actually reached out to me and I'm like, <laughs> literally one of the coolest thing. Every time Lee talks to me, I'm like, this is like the best day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> he texted me the other day. He's like, hey man, you got any uh some posing um any good posing songs you wanna reach uh give out to uh, Hunter? And I was like, Yeah, I got a couple and I was like, ah, oh, this is like literally the coolest thing ever. He respected me enough to kinda like, you know, ask my opinion on something. I was like, Oh dude, that's awesome. So, um yeah, definitely plan on doing that. So me and Daniel, our probably the, the what we were talking about was uh what was it doing an doing inter an interview? Daniel was like really smart. Daniel knows his old school bodybuilding very very well, and um, I mean I know a good amount, but he knows more than me. So I think we can kind of co co host the the interview, and then we'll also do like a training thing. And um, basically, I'll just be like a humble guy, kind of just un take you know learning from them, doing whatever they want me to do during the session. So I uh, I'm definitely excited about that. We're probably gonna have to. Hopefully with COVID and everything, we can do that type of stuff and get it done. But we shall, we'll figure it out. I mean, a lot of states are, are kind of easing up on stuff and with travel and gyms are opening in the states at least. Uh, also, another guy I know, Muhammad Makawi, he's in great shape. If you haven't seen him, he's in really, really good shape right now. Um, he lives in Toronto, and Toronto is opening up too. So we may not be able to get to guys like Francis Benfado because he lives in Spain, or Barry Demay because he lives in the Netherlands. I'm pretty sure we can't we can't go to those places, but 
you know, these other countries we can we can get to now, and all, all the states we can probably get to. So um, that's something really cool that we're gonna be shooting for next year after the uh, Olympia. So um, I cut these up into four pieces because uh, they are. This is about. Each one of these blocks was a pound a piece, 16 ounces. Half that's half is uh, eight, so four. And it's gonna cook down to about three, three ounces a piece. And um, I do six ounces in my meals, so each, so I'll just do two of these a meal. Um, yeah. So I'm not the most accurate when it comes to my beef. Like I'm not gonna be like, oh, this one's, this one's 0.5 over. I'm like, eh. I'm, I'm very accurate with my carbs though, but with my meat, so I'm a little bit less. I'm just gonna smush these down. I you used to, <laughs> you still measured all three packs, so over the week it should average out, right? You know, technically, yeah, and a lot of people actually do weekly averages when they're doing uh, meal plans. A lot, I mean, yeah, because you don't lose. I mean, people. I mean, even when you think about it, when people prep, they don't they don't make changes daily. They do weekly changes. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's kind of. So the people usually base their changes off a week anyway. So, um, kind of my thought process there. And it and <laughs> you can always say, I can always say, well, it hasn't hurt me yet. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're doing all right. Too. You're doing all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I waited a while to post stuff like this because I was like, ah, fuck. If it doesn't work, then people are gonna make fun of me. <laughs> so I made sure everything like worked before I started putting it out there. So you guys. <laughs> Maybe I should have been a bit more transparent, but uh, I like to make sure everything's good first. And, it, and yeah, so everything's been going well. What are your thoughts on, on going into the Olympia this year? How are you feeling? Man, I feel great. Uh, Is there anything you're still like feeling like you want to work on or are you feeling just all around good? So I feel all around good. I feel really happy with my physique. I think the thing, I, it's oddly enough, man, my back used to be like, I feel like my best body part. My, and my rear double used to be like one of my best poses, but now I feel like it's not. So <laughs> I feel like my front double looks really good now, my side chest. Uh, but it's kind of like, it kind of flipped on me. Like some of my best poses became my least favorite poses. How so? Um, I don't know how so. I mean, like my back isn't bad, but I feel like now, like my front double just looks better. Um, so I'm going to focus more on that. I mean, everything you do with bodybuilding is you, 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 set out a plan, you execute that plan, and then you reassess, and then you, you, you know, make changes from there. So, um, I, I can tell like, okay, well, I'm not happy with how that looked this year. So let's make the change and focus a little bit more on something else. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm happy with, but no, I, I'm really happy with the progress I've made. Um, I have no complaints on that whatsoever. Uh, but placing wise, man, I feel, pretty good i'm pretty realistic like people always say oh man if you don't if you don't believe you can win you're not gonna win and uh <laughs> i don't think that's the case whatsoever because i'm a man of history and ronnie coleman definitely didn't think he was getting first place after that ninth place finish the year before <laughs> he literally he literally was in shock he fell on the ground mm -hmm. and started crying so yeah, and Flex Wheeler definitely thought he was gonna win that year, and he he didn't. So mindset isn't the only thing. The biggest the biggest factor is work ethic. So I'm gonna work hard regardless. So, but um, I think that I can. I don't think I'm gonna win the Olympia this year. I do have people telling me that or whatever, and that's cool. That's awesome to hear. I have, you know fans like that. But I do think I'm gonna do better than I I did my last showing. I got ninth my last showing, and that's why I took that year off. But um, I think I can get top five pretty easily, um, just based on the improvements I've made. Um, I would like to get top three, but then, uh, and a lot of people think I can get top three, but then I have to I have to um, place better than the guy that beat me last, Alex. So that's the guy that's in my way for that top three spot. But then there's also you know other great athletes out there too. And I think the best athletes, honestly, are the ones that haven't even competed at the Olympia yet. There's, there's uh, three guys in particular that look really, really good that are making their Olympia debuts. Who's that? Um, DeAndre Campbell, really, really nice guy. Um, Fabian, forget his last name, but he's from the DR. Fabian Alara or something like that. Um, 
a lot of people don't know him actually because he got his pro card in bodybuilding and the same day he switched to classic and won that show and he qualified immediately like last year um he looks amazing um and then the last guy is i don't know his real name but he lives in spain uh model man model man or model man yeah it'll be interesting to see if he makes weight at weight actually though because uh I know that's been an issue with two of his shows, two or three of his shows making weight. Mm. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. And I know he tried to cheat at one of his shows. I mean, it's, I'm not being mean. That's what he up, did. He's bald and he wore a Rastafarian wig to the show that was like this how, like, it was like, it was like that how off his head. It gave him like two or three inches. Ah. So yeah, he got a lot of shit for that. Uh, yeah, and he did, he deserved it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, in any other any other organization, if you're doing something like that, you probably would have got suspended for a while, you know. Yeah. But bodybuilding, you know, it, they didn't really care. They just like, nope, go home. And he just did the next show. But uh, yeah, those are the three guys that I think will give me the hardest time um, going into the Olympia. <laughs> And it's funny, man, every, I tell people all the time, man, like each and every year the Olympia gets harder and harder, man. There's better and better athletes every year in Classic. Um, they can, and which is cool, they continue to get better. And like, it's not many people in Classic that's still around that's, that's improving. Um, that, there's not many people that, that did the Olympia the first year I did it that are still around. I think the only one, the only two are Breon and Arash. And only one of those guys is kind of maintaining their spot. Breon, Arash has steadily been dropping each and every year. I'm not sure if he's even competing this year, to be honest with you. I think he, I haven't really seen a lot of progress photos from or any from him. Mm -hmm. So I think he may have um, retired, but I, I'm not sure. Breon? No, Arash. Oh. Arash, sorry about that. But yeah, um, so really if Arash is done, there's only two of us left, me and, me and Breon. <laughs> Which is pretty crazy. It is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's evolved quite a bit since that. You know, I posted a couple pictures of like how I looked at first Olympia and how I look now. I'm like, that tells you, that tells you like how much it's evolved because I look completely different. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, that lets you know right then and there like how different this is. If I could win first that first year looking like this, if, if that physique from that first year was to compete now, it would be like in last call outs and shows. <laughs> which is Not pretty, even at the Olympia. Like, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm just real with myself. I'm not going to say, oh, I would have beat everybody. But, uh, <laughs> so we're going to put this in the oven real quick. Oh, man. I got it broil on broil. I guess 500. Throw that in. Close that up. And I think I put it on like, I don't know, like five minutes. So that cooks really quickly. All right. But the cool thing is, the cool thing is, um, somebody mentioned to me the other day that I am one of only two people at the Olympia that have that have beaten Chris Bumstead. I was like, oh, that's, that's awesome. I think only. Three people have beaten him in his like in his pro career, uh, me, Breon, and Darren Charles. But obviously, Darren's um, I think he's retired again. So um, that's really cool. I mean, I just got to beat him one more time. So <laughs> we're working on it. Do you think that helps mentally? No, it definitely does. I definitely think. If, I mean, like, cause I, in my mind, like, if I if I've done it before. And again, this is in 2016, my physique wasn't nearly what it is today. I'm thinking like, okay, I could do it again. Um, I just need time, obviously, uh, to fill out my physique, because I still got room to grow. Obviously, uh, that's not one of the genetic things I was blessed with, growing really quickly. Like some of these guys, like, <laughs> I posted up a, a progress picture, uh, that one of the side chest evolution or whatever. Mm -hmm. And some guy was like, well, Keon did this in six months. <laughs> and, I <was> like, well, <laughs> and I just laughed because I'm like, yeah, he did. <laughs> it's like, I was like, well, that's not me, man. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I wasn't really 
I mean, like people, when people think of genetics, they think of like this one thing when it's actually, it's, it's a culmination of several different factors. Like how well do you grow? You know, how are your muscles shaped? How easily do you get lean? How uh, round your muscles are? You know, um, muscle insertions, where they attach. Um, all these different things add up to being a good bodybuilder and not everyone has every one of those things. You may have a couple and but then you got guys like Phil Heath who has little has literally everything. Grows fast, gets shredded, has great muscle separation, um, brown muscles, everything under the sun, you know? Mm -hmm. I guess the only bad genetics he has is like his the way his midsection has been aging over the years. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't have that issue, but he does. Yeah. So, I mean, you can't have it all, I guess. <laughs> can't yeah. be, can't have everything. Right. But, um, yeah, that's what people think of genetics in a weird way. They think of it as this one thing, but it's literally like several things. And um, so there's that. And then people also, speaking about genetics, they talk about, um, they, they like to ask me, do I have good genetics for bodybuilding or do I have this? Or then they've been lifting a year and they say, oh, I have bad genetics or this or that. And I'm like, <clears throat> it kind of sucks, but like, you, can, you don't know until you know. <laughs> it's the kind of thing like, you can't, you can't, I wish, I wish that you could just look at yourself, take this DNA test and know if you're gonna be a good bodybuilder. But um, that's just not the case, man. Um, a lot of people, I mean, like, if I would have stopped, imagine each year I, I competed and I'm like, okay, well, this is my genetic limit and I would have quit. You know, each and every year I'm like, okay, I'll look a little better, okay, so, you know, I, I haven't reached a, my potential. You don't know what your potential is until you, you know, you've been there. And most people, so like, you think about like, hmm, Steffi Cohen. I don't know if you guys know her, she's like a power lifter, one of the best power lifters ever, uh, females. And you never know when, she didn't, she was saying she didn't know like this lift was gonna be her heaviest lift ever, you know what I mean? And she'll never lift heavier than that ever again, you know? So like, she didn't know what her potential was until she got to it and never, you know, never passed it. But, you know, up until that point, she was dominating for, you know, you know, five, six, seven years. So in each every year she kept going, she kept getting better. And, um, that's kind of the way bodybuilding is, you know? You don't know until you know. Like maybe one day, <laughs> maybe like in another like five years, I'm like, okay, well, I'm not improving anymore. This is my spot. I've been trying to get better for the next. Really good, really good example, uh, Brandon Curry. Brandon Curry wasn't doing anything until maybe three years ago. He had been bodybuilding for like 10 years and um, he just eventually found the right environment to help him become the best. He could have stopped. He's like, well, I'm a pro. I've been competing for five years. I've been competing for seven, eight years, and I still haven't won. I should just retire. But he kept going, and he finally figured out the combination of things to help him become the best. Um, it, it seems like he, <laughs> it kind of sucks, but it seems like being away from his family is <laughs> what he needed for a long periods of time. He's like, oh, I found out my, my weakness. It's my family. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> Dude, that's Louis. That is, I sound hard to hear, to be yeah. honest with you. So yeah, uh, <laughs> meat is done. <laughs> so yeah, I think, so like even with me, uh, let me take this out. So here is the beef, all done. Only took five minutes there. Nice. Not long at all. Um, so yeah, man, it doesn't take long to meal prep beef at all. It takes five, I guess, 15 minutes to 15 minutes, 10 minutes prep, five minutes cooked. Um, yeah, uh, but yeah, even look at me, like, <clears throat> uh, when I turned pro, I was 154, then, um, I took a year off, and then I won my first show at 157, so over a year later, <laughs> I only gained two pounds. <laughs> that's, that's insane, when my first so, show at 157. So I'm, I'm thinking, so like at the time I could have said to myself, well, I'm not growing anymore and this kind of sucks. Like maybe this is where the best I can be. I took a year off, only gained two pounds. Um, but then eventually I found Joe Bennett and he changed the way I trained completely. And I gained more in six months um, than I did in that whole year and a half I had off um, that, you know, back then. 
and I've been growing a lot more each and every year since working with him. So, what's the biggest difference between training by yourself and training with Jeff? Well, training by well, the training philosophy has changed. I lift a, I'm very progressive now. I track everything. Um, you didn't lower before? Volume, no lower volume. I just did what Jay Culler did, <laughs> pretty much. I train intuitively, you know, I just kind of go and feel it and blah, blah, blah. And it works for some people. It works for the very genetically elite, especially yeah. when people, um, and that's why I talk about genetics being not, not just one thing. Like, certain people like Jay, Phil, a lot of, a lot of the open bodybuilders can kind of do, a lot of the best open builders, bodybuilders can do what they want, training-wise. Um, they just grow no matter what they do. And it's kind of evident because they go train with a whole bunch of different people and still grow. But then you have um, <clears throat> me, I don't, I have to be a little bit more meticulous with that, with that part. Same thing with, uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So once I started training with Joe, um, yeah, I went from, now I'm, one, I'm 180 um, now. Um, right at this moment? Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I've definitely been growing a lot more um, in these past couple of years. Right, two. I think I've been working with him three years now. The past three years. So it's been great. He saw me at the Tampa Pro. That's where I met him actually. Well, I didn't meet him there, but he saw me there and he reached out to me. So we're gonna put the turkey in the thing. I just got a crock pot here and it's backwards. Let me spin it around. Yeah, and this is really, you know, just set it and leave it. Let me get the thing out. Did you put anything else in there with it or it's just the turkey? Just the turkey. I used to put water in there, but obviously I didn't know what I was doing. So <laughs> my friend, my friend had a lady friend. She's like, what are you doing? Why are you putting um, water in there? I was like, Aren't, isn't it going to dry out? She's like, no. <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we're going to let... Actually, the beef is done, so I'm not gonna do this because I'm not traveling now. But what I would normally do, I'm just gonna tell you guys when I travel. So I cook everything up. Um, I make enough food. I have my Tupperware ready to go. So I, I pack all my food for the day of my travel. Um, but then every all the extra food I have there, I put it in a Ziploc bag and I freeze it. And um, I take it out that morning before I get on the plane and I just put it in my checked uh, luggage. But you could also, I wanna say you can bring it on the plane with you if you want. I rarely see any issues with that. Uh, and as soon as I, you know, as soon as I land, it's still frozen, it's still cold, and by the time I get to my room, I just throw it in the refrigerator, and it's good to go for the next day. Only thing I would say is when you're traveling with food, if you're traveling internationally, you cannot travel, you can't bring beef over international borders I think vegetables and fruit. So you can just, you can bring chicken, and I think you can bring turkey and fish, but just not any um, red meats mm. for whatever reason. I don't know why, I, don't, I really have no idea. But, and fruits, because they don't want our fruits to, they don't want like seeds from our fruits to be something, it's something to do with agriculture and whatever. So, <laughs> so you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that's, this is the little food prep I did. I hope you guys like my ramblings today and until next time, peace.